Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Sarah and it's so great to have you with me tonight, today, whenever you're watching this. I hope everyone had a fantastic holiday. Um, my daughter, if you guys are following me on Instagram, was diagnosed with a double ear infection. So I had to delay this video a couple days. I'm really sorry for that, but thank you so much for understanding and um, she's on antibiotics, she's in good spirits, and she actually got tested for the virus today and it came back negative. So all is good in our hood. So let's talk about Devin and her new boo, Topher Park. Um, a lot has been going on on her Instagram lately and we just need to talk about a few things. One thing I really wanted to talk about, one was we're going to talk a lot about her Christmas Q&A and specifically we're going to talk about Topher or Christopher. I don't know exactly what name he goes by, but we're going to be talking about him and we're also going to be talking about um, their Christmas Q&A, um, what I thought of it, which I think probably judging from my posts, you guys probably know what I think about it. Um, but one of the things I wanted to discuss was she had on her Instagram stories a couple days before Christmas, um, this, uh, video that, uh, was proof or, uh, showed in some way that she was so miserable in Korea and this was when they were doing f self filming for uh the 90 day fiance uh the other way and she just had had it and she was pleading for help and this you know because she's been saying there's all this evidence about what she has been claiming against jihoon this was proof of that evidence the only problem was is that this video had no sound now you could say, well, people, maybe they don't post sound to their videos, but she usually does. And it just seems really suspicious that you would post allegedly exc exculpatory evidence to back up your story um, with no sound. So it's you crying, you miserable, and we have no idea what's going on. So really, it doesn't tell us anything. I'm going to touch on this a little bit later in this video, but I feel like this is a calculated move on Devin's part to craft a narrative. Um, like I've said in the past on past videos, I feel like she's intentionally vague. Um, she kind of leaves us to interpret her words and um, she clearly has a game plan and I feel like this was part of that plan and i I just feel like it kind of backfired in our face because it really did not show us anything at all. So I wanted to talk about Christopher Park Topher. Um, I'm not sure what name he goes by. Um, he, it's actually his birthday today if you're watching this on Monday. So happy birthday if you're watching this. Um, this might not be your best birthday present, but you know, it is what it is. Um, He's 28 years old, according to Devin. Um, he went to UC Riverside. Um, he was an actor. He has a lot of um, credits on IMDb. And according to her, they met by happenstance on this plane. He was dating someone. She was obviously in a relationship with Jihoon. And um, they... I guess kind of casually kept in contact and then really ramped up their communication once she returned to the United States, which um, there's contradicting evidence there, but I'm not going to really go into that um, today in this video. But um, so Tover, they met two years ago. He's an actor. And actually, um, if you go on YouTube, you can see this like um, acting reel of his that shows his uh, craft. So just take a look at this clip. Hi. Hey. Uh. Your usual seat? Uh, actually, table for two today. Uh, yeah. 
I would have still loved you without the glitz and the high heels. Maybe I thought you were someone else. Were you ever real? Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey there, Mary. Oh, Mary Elizabeth, I thought you never asked. I think the biggest takeaway that I get from watching them on their YouTube channel, from watching them on Instagram, is that it's very clear that um, Chris Topher um, is trying to achieve a level of fame. Um, I, I just think that that's pretty apparent. My initial thoughts on the Christmas Q and A is that I, I, I don't think that this is a r romantic relationship. Um, maybe it is for Devin. Devin seems to be, be a little bit, um, more into him than I feel like he's into her just based on watching their videos. Um, she kind of acts schoolgirl ish around him and, uh, that's just my initial reactions. Um, but I think this is a mutually beneficial relationship. I think Devin gets to be with someone who's tech and media savvy and who's going to help rebrand her. And Topher gets the Insta following of dating a reality star. Like Devin has a built in following 90 day fiance has a built in following um, and him entering this realm, whether for better or worse, gets him that instant following of people that um, he might be looking for to craft his brand. So a lot of us have seen this Christmas Q&A and the biggest thing I think that people have been talking about is the say no moment. There is a question that is asked or a question that she reads that's supposedly a frequently asked question, which is if um, he has ever seen the show and you can clearly see her say, say no, take a look at this clip. And I want to shout out 90 day Yahoo boy for sending in this uh, clip for me. So I didn't have to do the editing myself. So thank you 90 day Yahoo boy. Take a look at this clip on the show. And have you watched it? Uh, I have not watched it. Um, I've only heard, I've, I've said this before, I've only heard it. So like I said early on in the video, this is clearly her crafting a narrative. She wants to put out a certain story and she can't even get on the same page. I mean, at least get on the same page with him before you film. You knew the questions you were going to ask or going to read. Um, I, it boggles my mind that she's so bad at crafting her own narrative. But um, I just feel like for us, the viewers, it's when she goes on her Instagram stories uh, or on YouTube and laments the fact that people don't believe her or are inclined to believe Jihoon, who really doesn't say much at all. Um, this is why, this is why, because you're clearly not being truthful. And how are, when you, we, all we ask for is proof or some sort of corroborating evidence so that we can believe your story. I, for one, and I've said this multiple times, I want to believe her. I don't want to think that she is manipulating a story um, for her benefit or um, dragging Jihoon through the mud or putting other people that are actually victims of these kind of circumstances in a, a negative light so that they wouldn't believe. I don't want to believe that she would do that, but... She has not proven to us any facts to back up her story. Everything she has provided us, i.e. this latest Instagram story that had no sound, 
actually proves it the other way. So it, when Devin wonders why people don't believe her, that's why. And it's, I, I hope that in the future, she's uh, supposedly, she's not a part of the show anymore, which I think is a good thing. But, but she still is posting about the show. She still is very much making the show a focal point of her YouTube channel, which she makes money off of. Um, she also is posting those like clickbaity articles, which I know is another company that posts on her behalf. But you would think that if this show, this franchise, this company was so damaging to her and her family, she would cut all ties. That's what I would do. But I mean, I guess to each their own. Ultimately, I wonder what the long term ramifications are for Devin's children. Um, she has claimed several times that Drusilla has multiple issues stemming from this show. Um, and if that is in fact the case, what are you doing by perpetuating more videos about her? This is no longer part of the show. This is just on your own YouTube channel what you are profiting off of her you're profiting off of content about your children and if your children are damaged or hurt or in need of um, intervention because of these experiences what are you doing to them um, to better those situations certainly filming them for content and for monetization is not helping them. Personally, I think the documentary and the documentary trailer that I reacted to um, is just proof that views, clicks, the clout that goes along with this is much more of a priority to Devin than her children. Um, I think personally that Devin getting into this relationship with this person who happens to have a acting background, who happens to have a somewhat known digital lifestyle and fashion vlog or blog. Um, I think that this benefits her. I think her having this um, huge following on Instagram and YouTube, she has over 100,000 followers on YouTube. She has over I think 400,000 followers on Instagram. Um, it's a mutually beneficial relationship and I don't think that the children are a consideration at all. I think the only time that the children make it into the equation is when they're filming them for content. Also, if we're looking at the Christmas Q&A on its face, I thought it was kind of boring. I thought it was poorly edited which you guys can totally have those opinions of my um of my channel as well so I don't want to hate too much but um there was kind of just these lulls and um I I think that they thought it was going for some sort of um effect that just didn't come across um I thought that they answered questions that I didn't really care about. I don't know um, if their super fans really cared what their favorite Christmas movies were, especially when um, Topher said that he didn't have one. You would think, this is my thing, you would think that if you, you had all these questions ahead of time, right? Have answers, have answers, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. It was just, it was kind of weird, it was kind of bizarre. It was 27 minutes long. And I just thought that it didn't really, I don't know what it really accomplished other than um, to kind of solidify most people's thoughts about Devin, about the things that I've been talking about, about how she is crafting this narrative, how she is intentionally vague on her accusations and that her accusations really seem to have no foundation. So. I think that unintentionally, that's what she accomplished with this Q&A, especially when she was caught mouthing, saying no to him. That was just so blatant with her um, being unauthentic or inauthentic rather, sorry, 
and um, deceptive. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, you guys. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Reality Squad, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.